continuing our discussion on image restoration, I'd like to talk about noise generation. The process of simulating noise in images uses known distributions. Real noise is very difficult to simulate, but by knowing some basic image of the image for information system, it is possible to obtain a good approximation of the noise. Implementation of this process consisting in generating random numbers and using probability density functions. So assume that we have a noise that is given by a or there is caused by uh, an effect that uses the um, Gaussian distribution. So for example, the thermal noise that we talked about. In this case, we could use um, a normal or Gaussian distribution to simulate this noise by generating random numbers that are more frequent at the mean value and become less uh, frequent as we go away from the mean in both sides using a exponential function. We could also simulate noise by using other distributions such as the Rayleigh distribution that follows this shape of the distribution, a gamma distribution that also appears in, in some um, practical scenarios, and then the image will have um, different characteristics. For example, this image here has uh, only three, three values of pixels, zero, uh, and another gray level, which is black, another gray level that, that's a little bit darker, so a dark gray, and then a light tone of gray. If we generate random Gaussian noise, the image will be similar to this, and if, if we observe the histogram, the histogram will have three Gaussians, so three, uh, three peaks in this case, following the Gaussian distribution. This uh, is the same but generated using the Rayleigh distribution and the gamma distribution. So the, the shape of the histogram for a given pixel that was supposed to be uh, a given value will then be transformed into this distribution. Similarly, we can have other distributions such as the exponential distribution, the uniform distribution, so note that in this case the noise is added in a uniform way, so it doesn't have this bell shape or any other shape, it's just uh, evenly distributed over some range of values. Or also the um, salt and pepper case. Note that in this uh, scenario we have the zero, zero value, which will um, either be big pixels from the, from the background or black pixels the, due to the noise. We also have those, those two peaks here that are um, respected, uh, uh, respectively correlate, uh, associated with the darker uh, gray level and the lighter gray level. And then on the end here, we have a small amount of white pixels. So those are the distributions, exponential, uniform, and impulsive in both A and B, in this case, A is zero, B, 255. So by having some knowledge about what, what is the actual noise that corrupts the image, we could use filters in order to diminish this, um, this noise. One way to know the, the actual uh, characteristic of the noise or the noise source is to study a region that should be flat, that is, it should be consisted of only the same values of pixels, but then it is not. So we just can't, we, we can just like crop a little bit a region of the image and then compute the histogram as we did here. 
and by inspecting the histogram we can see if the noise for example is uniformly distributed or has a Gaussian distribution and so on so in general mean operators allow to reduce the signal variance and therefore reduce noise there are some options for mean filtering the arithmetic filtering is the most used one but we also have geometric mean the harmonic mean and also the weighted mean the arithmetic mean increase the blur by creating a new value based on the average of neighbor pixels so neighborhood is often a rectangular of size m times n and then we have um, this process here so we we are basically going through all values coordinates s and t in a region s of x and then taking the average between all of them we could have also a weighted version weighted, weighted version of it by including lambda values weight uh, lambda values as weights defined by s and t so we have uh, a single value for every pixel and then they would have a uh, different weight in this case or, or um, in general we, we assume that lambda um, is one so all pixels have the same weight the geometric mean can help preserving details when the pixel difference are in orders of multiples of a given base so, so let's say two base 2 or base 10 or uh, and so on so and if the pixels vary not by um, unities but by some values in a, a in a base such as 2 4 8 16 32 etc so it, it is the ray um, is a logarithm uh, logarithmic uh, noise then we can apply the geometric mean it it would work uh, well in this case in the harmonic mean is adequate when we have a mixture of additive noise with some salt and pepper noise or especially some salt noise because the harmonic mean tends to reduce the influence of outliers so we, uh, it will give less wave for a value that's too high and um, differs from the rest of them we also have filters based on order statistic so given a series of observations of some random variable order statistics are obtained by sorting those observations in ascending order and taking uh, the quantiles so we can for example um, observe or take the uh, maximum point so the maximum point is the quantile 100 so it's um, the the value that I observe when I already have observed all the values in that range the minimum is the first the first value in the order so it's the very value zero um, and the the me, uh, median is the, um, the quantile uh, 50 so it's it's half so it's 50 percent uh, the value uh, related to 50% of all values in ascending order and we, all, we can also have the mean point filter uh, which I'm going to show you um, in the next slide so those all those filters are nonlinear filters but this is a, an important observation in this case the median filter are, is widely used in image processing because it often removes um, noise while preserving edges so it will preserve more abrupt edges but will remove texture for example so it's very effective to, to remove impulsive noise the maximum filter can be used to locate bright points in the image and then make the, the image brighter and the minimum filter 
can be used to locate dark points in the image and then if I just use the minimum filter the image will become darker but by combining those two by taking the average between maximum and minimum we can have a combination of order statistics and mean and then producing a, an effect that's similar to the median but um, it often thickens the borders or, or edges finally I'm going to uh, com comment on adaptive filtering the adaptive filtering instead of using a single filter for all image for all the image it will take into account local statistics so the idea is that we allow to or um, to the filter to be stronger or to smooth out the values in mostly in flat regions so we regions with less detail will be uh, will be smoothed out much more but regions in which there is already a very strong fluctuation of values I will not allow the filter to change because those regions are probably associated with the objects not the noise so any filter can be developed in an adaptive fashion for example we can perform adaptive noise reduction using mean or a mean filter and by performing a, uh, a per by assessing the local variance and then I'm only or I'm using the mean weighted by the local variance so if the local variance is too high I'm not going to apply any filter and if the local variance is low I'm going to apply the mean filter we can also perform noise reduction using median and by observing the local, in, local interquartile range or the IQR which is a measure of dispersion but using robust statistics using the order statistics so this is a general algorithm for adaptive noise reduction so considering that we have a local region s of x composing or composed of several pixels in some neighborhood so the response of the adaptive filter needs g of x that means the value of the noisy image at some coordinate x sigma squared of the noise so the variance of the noise in the image so globally in the image uh, I'm, I'm I could or I can assess what is the variance of the noise I need this value and then I'm going to compute the local mean and the local variance so note that this value here is the only one that I don't have I don't have um, prior to start computing this this adop adaptive filtering so I can take a value of the pixel I can compute a local mean of pixels in this region s of x and I I'm able to compute also the local variance of pixels in s of x so just using the equation for the mean and the variance this is okay but then what um, what remains to be computed is the variance of the noise globally in the image so this is uh, I'm going to comment uh, uh, in the next slide so in this case here uh, assume that I have the variance of the noise so I, I know that the noise has some fixed variance along all the pixels of the image I can compute adapt an adaptive filter using this equation here and then um, and then here note that if I just have if I if I um, have one so if I if this term is one that means the noise is equal the variance of the noise is equal to the variance of the local pixels in s then it becomes one and then I what I have is just the mean or uh, the local mean and nothing else so it will if this is one this goes to one then what I have is a regular mean filter but if the 
value that is uh, related to the local the um, local region is higher than the the region uh, uh, higher than the noise then i'm going to have some kind of combination between the actual image and the mean um, the mean filter so we need to estimate or know the noise variance so I, I told you that this uh, is not um, um, something trivial could be not trivial but I can estimate it by measuring the variance in a flat region of the image as I told you before we can study noise by looking at regions that should be flat in an image but uh, but it is actually not so by measuring by just taking this flat region of the image measuring the variance there I can estimate uh, sigma square for the the global noise and then the filter behaves in each point as follows so if the um, if the noise so I have to do that I if, if the local variance is zero that means we have a flat region so I'll just take the g of x if the local um, value of the variance is much higher than the variance of the noise then the result will approach g of x as well uh, why is that because if i measure the variance in some region and this variance is much higher than the noise variance then that means that we have an object there that should not be suppressed and then when we have a local va uh, value of variance that's similar to what we expect the noise to be then we we're going to filter it out by taking a local mean at the region s of x um, usually we need that um, the value the values that are related to the noise are always less um, or equal to or lower or equal to the local values so uh, this should not be a very large value so when it is the opposite the um, we must define this whole term to one to avoid spurious values and this condition makes the filter nonlinear. the bilateral filter is yet another method that is adaptive and can be used to reduce noise while preserving edges what it basically does is to compute a filter for each pixel of the image so instead of for example using a gaussian filter to reduce the noise in some region we are going to compute a an adaptive gaussian filter considering the differences in some region so in in every region centered at some pixel so if we say that we are centered at a pixel p the bilateral filtering is like that so it will has an it has a normalization factor and then we, it will try to um, to minimize the difference between the value of p so the pixel p and the value of um, the, the 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 remaining pixels in the neighborhood q so we are going to sum for every q which is the uh, represents the the neighborhood so we want to approximate that so this is not new so this is basically a gaussian filter but in here we have something that's trying to also um, make the gaussian filter so that the actual g of p is similar to the value of q so the term a defines the wave in space so the difference in coordinates while the term b controls the range wave the difference in intensities avoiding filtering over edges so by removing the normalization in the term b what we have is a normal gaussian filter and this is the effect of the bilateral filter when um, we compare to the gaussian filter to the regular gaussian filter 
when we observe or when we've centered a pixel at a flat region the differences between the pixels here are not significant so this term here uh, the difference is zero basically or um, th the difference basically does not exist so because we don't have we have a very low difference here what it remains is just a Gaussian a regular Gaussian filter however when you have differences between or abrupt differences between pixels the resulting filter if I'm filtering a pixel at the center here what I what I want to do is I want to combine or to filter by using just those pixels that are similar to the pixel I'm processing so if the, pre the if the pixel for example here is a light gray I'm going to use only a, co a linear combination between pixels that are similar to that light gray and ignore those dark regions so the filter becomes like this so note that the filter is basically just considering the left hand side and ignoring the right hand side and in here I've I have a texture so assume that I'm processing some given pixel here in, in the um, in the middle of this sub image if I had a Gaussian filter it would it would consider all pixels um, in a radial form so uh, independent of its value but if I use the bilateral filter it will compensate or ignore dark values darker values considering only those values that are shown here and then um, and those three sub images were taken from those three blocks here of this image the la this larger image so Sigma s and Sigma R are parameters for the size of the neighborhood usually 2% of the image diagonal is used in this case and the Sigma R is the minimum amplitude to consider presence of an edge that mean the mean of the uh, usually the mean of the image gra gradient why is that we this controls the minimum amplitude so that we can consider some pixel to be filtered or to be considered in the filter and the problem of this filter although it's very very good filter is that because each neighborhood has a different filter so as we saw here we cannot compare compute this filter using the FFT and the naive implementation of this filter is very slow although there are approximations with good quality and speed ratio so the um, the bilateral filtering I filter is a filter that you should consider when you want to filter an image but you also want to preserve borders